Welcome, thank you for joining me for how to paint wood surfaces. We're going to have awesome fun today. Lots and lots of textures that we're going to learn. I'm looking forward to it because it's a nice fun little class. Um, painting wood textures is a multi-step process. So what I've decided to do just to speed that up and to keep the acrylic guys happy, I'm going to be painting in acrylics today. But if you've got your oil paints out, don't worry. You can continue and follow along 99% of the way. Um, here and there, when I tell you now to be an ideal time to just stop, then you'd stop and you'd wait till the next day or so just to get the, the, the paint to dry. <coughs> because it's a multi-step process, if you are going to paint it in oils, which I normally do, um, <coughs> use a drying medium so that you can get your paint to dry quicker then that will help you just to complete your steps sooner um, if you do have acrylics then well the, 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 then you're sorted you put the hair dryer on it and you you A for way you, you get this going quite quickly <coughs> so let me show you a few of the things that we need to do for for the wood or that we need to look out All right, so what I've done is I've got my, my breadboard here and we've just popped on, I've just thrown some jelly beans on there just for interest and we'll see what we can do with that. Now, when we're painting wood surfaces, the, the few things that we need to look out for is <coughs> the most common one that we used to is the rings, right? Your, your trees grow in rings. So... The older the tree, the more rings. It will start here in the center, and then every year it gets a new ring, right? Um, now, those, those rings aren't always nice and, and cylindrical, or how would you call it, perfectly round. It all depends on the direction the wind was blowing and all sorts of funny things. Maybe it had some moss growing on the one side that was taking away some of the sun on that side of the tree and all sorts of funny things and obviously trees just like me and you they're all unique each one wants to be different so those little unique rings actually make it easy for us to paint because they they're not perfect so that gives us a lot of place to play now usually when you buy a, a piece of wood like this or you you've got a tabletop they haven't cut it around the around the center like this they've cut it down like that so what that means is those little rings that you get are often like these ones over here and this over here are often what we call knots so that is actually where the branches come out so you're not actually seeing the main ring from the trunk itself you, you, you're seeing like these guys over here would be the actual branch that is coming out. So that's the first thing that we want to look out for is these rings. So what I'm going to do is I want to zoom in on those rings. I want to show you what they look like from close up. What you find often happens with these rings is that, let me just find where I am here. There, I've zoomed in so much that you'll have a, a hard line or a hardish line where the, the initial ring starts and the previous ring ends and then it'll fade out from there so um, what you'd want to do is look out for those harder and softer lines but if you look very carefully you'll still see even this hard line is not necessarily perfectly a super sharp line it's still got a little bit of fading in it I'm just sort of squizzing here on my board to see if I can see another one. That'll give us a good indication of that. I think there we go. Take a look over here. You see you've got a hardish line, but it's still it's still soft in, in the bigger picture. It's still soft over there. And it's it softens out to this side. So look for those little shaded pieces. And zoom back out again. 
Then you get also all sorts of little funny pieces. So let's zoom in on this area here. See these little funny imperfections here. So there would be a little small branch that came out over there. So that gives us a knot. And even around the knot, you see you've got these funny little pieces. I don't know, maybe it's actually still bark, who knows. And then here as well, um, that's possibly a place where it was at right out on, on the outside ring of the actual tree itself. So when they polished this, that, that there could still be a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. Oh, maybe it, it, it was also just the start of another a branch or something like that coming out. So I am alone in the studio today, so I have to do all the zooming in and out myself. All right, so let's. So what we're going to do is we're, we're first going to just paint a, 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 a flat surface like this, sort of like a table. Then from there, what we'll do is we'll we'll look to see what do we need to do to convert our knowledge of a flat surface like this to be able to convert it to something like say a wooden bowl or, or, or something like that. Okay, so let's go back to here. Um, I think what, what I'll do is just to sort of show you what I've done. I've taken, I've pre-taken a photograph, um, which I've just sort of laid out using the jelly beans. And just to get a nice little rough little composition that I liked. So what I did was this. I, I just popped down a few jelly beans and then I started playing with them. I felt the white sort of disappeared a bit. Um, then I had three, see I've got three harmonious colors there which I quite liked and then the contrasting color there which I also quite liked so I, I decided to play around with those the yellow was also a little bit close to my board color um, this this board color here is actually not quite as gray as, as what you see on the on the camera the for some of the camera changes the color a bit so what I did was I just played around and, and used a different, few little different uh, compositions. So maybe spread out like that, and then I maybe chucked them like that. Uh, you know, and, and I found that you know that was there, say, too symmetrical. So I maybe moved them out there to a third to see what that looked like. And then I moved, moved maybe him around. So now I've got a, a touching and a separated um, grouping. You know, all those lessons from our, our first first class so I, I, I tried to incorporate those guys so in the end of the day what I came up with was that and I, I quite like that that color you, you see on the wood over there is but is, is the color that you that the board actually is all right so what we've got here is we've got one two sort of three slats going on there one of them a little bit disappeared you'll see there's a little bit of a curve now that curve is obviously not really there on the board um, I think that was just a function of the camera and me taking such a close-up shot and then we've got three lovely bright jelly beans just to add some interest to our wood so just so we don't not just painting a, a flat boring plank Okay, so what we're going to do now is, I'm going to move to there. The first thing we need to do is start mixing ourselves up some, some colors. So we'll obviously start with this, and then we'll, we'll move to that. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the wood, and then we'll move to our jelly beans. So we'll do them very last. Now, as you can see, our jelly beans are... are very bright intense colors so I, I have to pre-plan that guy so that I can keep those colors nice and intense and also because I've got all this texture at the back here 
Um, I think you can see our best option here would be to mask off our, our jelly beans and so that we can paint like all these kind of textures over the, the masked off area not have to try and squeeze that, that um, texture in on either side of the jelly bean. So that's going to save us a lot of time. I think let's go over to the canvas and, and let's quickly draw that out. So let's let's complete that planning and then we'll mix our paints and then start painting. So I'm going to use the same canvas as we did last week. And we'll just use the one of the other corners. So let's go sound to that corner there. That should be fine. Now because our our breadboard, we know these different slats of wood are, are parallel. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure. So I'm going to sort of just judge. Let's say 8, 16, that gives us that little bit. Yeah, let's say about, I'm happy with that. So we've got, say, 8 over there. So I'm measuring in centimeters now. <coughs> So I'm just measuring those two equal distances. Obviously, we know that top one is, is cut off a little bit, so that's fine. We don't really care how much wood we see there. So I'll draw those two lines all the way across. I'm using my watercolor pencil to do that. And now, often you'll find you've got, say, maybe a, a slat that ends over here and starts over there, so then you draw that line in as well. I've kept it simple. I've made sure we haven't got any of those extra slots just to save us a little bit of repetitive technique. So what I'm going to do here, because my what we painted last week was in oils, and I obviously don't want to paint over it. I'm going to mask off that little piece for a start. I'll just put down one or two rows of masking tape there. Because we are going to be using quite a big brush. We're going to be using a hardware brush. You obviously don't work that accurate with a big hardware brush. So I'll give a, a nice three or four strips over there to make sure that if I do go over it with a, a big hardware brush, we're not destroying last week's glass. And let's be proactive for the top one as well. Do the same thing there. Alrighty, see we've our numbers have grown, so that means uh, people have been getting their emails. That's great, very very relieving to know that. There we go. So now there should be no accidents, and we'll walk out the end of today's class with a nice clean, uh, nice clean canvas. Okay, now we've got our, our jelly bean, so let's get that onto the canvas, over there like that, so we can see where do our jelly beans go. So what I'm going to do is, I think in this case, I'm actually just going to use some, uh, some masking tape, because I'm going to have maybe a jelly bean, let's see, around here somewhere, and then two around here somewhere. So what I'll do is, I'll say, around there, I'm just judging it roughly on a third. So I'm just getting myself a little a piece of masking tape there, like that. And let's see, seems to be running something like that. I think that size seems reasonably okay. Draw that a little bit harder so that it'll show a bit on the video. 
Ah, there we go. Now we can see it. And then this guy, the pink one, seems to overlap and he's sort of a little bit to that side, so around there somewhere. So let's cut three pieces. I want one piece of masking tape for each jelly bean. Alright, so our pink jelly bean goes around there somewhere like that and he overlaps this join over there. And let's see, this jelly bean maybe runs something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift that up and cut it out. <laughs> I see somebody in the chat box is saying happy pancake day. Wow. Well, in, in which country is it Pancake Day today? <laughs> I love pancakes. Alright, so now I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut it out. I'll try and get it nice and the, the roundings, try and get them as rounded as what I can. It'll just save me some hassle later. If you get you do all these cuts all blocky, then obviously when you lift them up, your your background is going to be painted blocky all the way around it. So a little bit of trouble here now is going to save me all that hassle later on of trying to get the roundings right on the canvas. See now they'll automatically be right. So okay, let's see. That jelly bean goes there, and with him in. I can put the next guy down and he seems to be running uh, roughly around there somewhere. So let's draw him in. He seems to do something like this. Maybe he's got a bit of a, a rounding over there like that. So let's cut him out as well. You can obviously, if, you, if, you, if you've got a nice steady hand, you can use your knife as well to cut around there like that. I find it's just easier to take off the masking tape and quickly uh, use the scissors. Again, it's a case of just using whatever is easiest for you. Cut that out over there. Pancakes, um, most of the world call, call pancakes pancakes and what, what South Africans recall or regard as pancakes, they call crepes. So let's call that over there. So if you tell a South African that uh, it's pancake day, they think of a nice big round crepe. But uh, South Africans call what everybody else calls pancakes. South Africans call them flapjacks. Quite bizarre, eh? Okay, nearly done. This is a nice fun little painting. I, I quite like the idea of the of the jelly beans. I was trying to think, what, what could I add to the wood to, just to make it look interesting? So I, I walked to the kitchen. I thought, all right, I'll make myself a cup of coffee that'll, that'll let me think about it. I can't think without coffee. <clears throat> and as I was waiting for the kettle to boil, I just happened to open our little, we've got a cupboard here in the house where there's uh, sweets and candy and all those kind of things in it. Nuts and whatnot. And as I opened that, I just saw these lovely bright jelly beans peeping at me. So I grabbed a few of them. Okay, so oh, I'm probably not even putting them back at the right place. Who cares? It doesn't matter. 
I'm actually wondering if those jelly beans aren't maybe now a little bit too far to the side. So let, I think let's move them up. So take him and put him maybe over there. Take him and put him over. Yeah. That guy runs around like that. That guy actually overlaps that line, I mustn't forget that. And I'm, I'm going to make sure they're touching. Hey, that's better. Check my thirds like this. Now my guys are on the thirds. Yeah, that's roughly on a third over there, those two over there. I'm happy with that. Lynn says in, in Canada they also use either flapjacks or pancakes. Okay guys, so let's go over to the palette and let's mix some colors. Okie dokie. So if I take a look, the, the first color that I see is up here. I'm going to start, sort of start from lightest to darkest. I'm not sure if you're going to see my, my cursor there. It's a, uh, maybe a little bit small on the screen. If you go full screen, you should be able to see it. You see there, there's my lightest color. So I'm going to start mixing him. Because that's the lightest color I see on this whole whole painting. Now, obviously, what I'm doing is I am ignoring my jelly beans at this stage. We're only worrying about the wood. Um, somebody's uh, asking, what am I using to stick the jelly beans onto the canvas? Um, I'm presuming you're talking about. I'm presuming you're talking about these over here. I'm using uh, masking tape for that. All right, so I'm going to use some white. Like I said, I am painting in acrylic today because the it's a multi-step process. So then from there, I do also see some, it's definitely a yellowy color, eh? And it's also a browny color. So I'm going to use some cadmium yellow. And let's see, what have I got here? Yeah, burnt sienna should do the trick. So I'll use some burnt sienna. And that burnt sienna is clearly too bright. So I think to dull him down, remember burnt sienna is in basically orange's shadow color so to dull him down even further we'd need some blue so i'm going to pop down some french ultramarine as well ah, i'm sure that'll do us okay so let's start mixing our that lightest color over there so let's pop down some white and pop in just a tiny touch of cadmium yellow and let's see what happens to that color first now i know obviously it's going to go too bright right now but it gives me a starting point so when I'm mixing these colors like that I always look for my my majority color in the mix so looking at this little top piece over there maybe what I can do is let's zoom in let's zoom in on this little piece over here like that so what I'm working on is this top little band over there at the, at the top of your photograph so I'm going to just get the basics there like that and then let's add a little bit of burnt sienna to it just to brown him up so he's not quite so so dull or not quite so yellow. Now remember it depends on the different type of wood that you're painting the, these colors could be totally different and even from tree to tree and in the side the same tree I mean let me zoom back out again there look at all these the multitude of, of shades and colors that we're getting look at that I mean there's there's sort of a mid-tone and there's also a mid-tone but you see that seems to be a bit redder there's like a almost a, it's a, a very dark color but not quite too black yet and there's almost a yellowy color so 
yeah, if, if I get my color and my wood slightly off, nobody's going to know, man. So, so don't stress too much. Just get ballpark. That's good enough. All right, so I think I'm going to use that. And yeah, maybe I should actually mix up a little bit more, right? Then we'll be proactive and we'll just block in the entire, the entire area. So let's quickly mix up some more of that. Now you see, I, I, because I want to match that color again and get them, get them close, I'm not throwing in my white and everything inside there. I'm mixing it next to it. So that way I can compare the two. Yeah, I think that's close enough. So we'll, no, 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 they're close. Now I'll mix them together. There we go, that's great. So that should give us, give us a good view there. So let's go over to that. And Oh, there we go. I think that's that's a good framing there, so we shouldn't miss anything. So now I'm just going to use a, a nice big hardware brush. So I'm using a, a hardware brush like this. It's also called a pastry brush. I'm going to use one of them. Um, Marina's asking, or she says uh, she assumes that some steps need to be dry before going on with the next. Yes, they are. They do. And that's why I'm painting in acrylics today, just to speed up that process. I am now picking up some uh, water just to thin down this paint so that it can go a little bit further quicker and I'm not pasting it on. So all I'm trying to do is, you can almost say lay down an underpainting there to, I'm getting rid of the white of the canvas. Alrighty, that was easy enough. I've lost one of my lines a little bit. That's fine. Alright, at, at this point, you can wait till it's dry. Or if you say you're working with the oils, you can continue, just continue straight off from this. It doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to dry mine. So I'm going to put the hair dryer on it. Okay, um, I've got another question, that is, I know the wood is going to be flat um, in, in the painting that I'm going to do, but do we use the same principle for something that's on top of the wood? So, in other words, I'm, I'm using a side view. Um, yeah, let's say, for example, I, I do have a something like that. So, let's zoom out there, and let's go in onto the... to say this breadboard over here, or the bread tin. Let's turn him directly at the camera. So as you can see, again, I've got slats. These ones are a little bit closer to each other. So you, you paint exactly the same, whether you're looking at it from the top or from the, or from the side. Um, what you would look out for is notice that this angle here and because of that angle there you've got a 
a color change. So here this guy is lighter because he's catching more sunlight and this guy here is darker because he's catching less sunlight. So th those are the kind of things that you'd look out for. So um, in this case obviously I couldn't put jelly beans on there but let's say there was a sticker you know so let's say you want to you want to paint the sticker over here in, in fine detail right. So then what you would do is then you'd block that guy off and still paint the guy as normal and then when you're done peel that bit of masking tape off over there and do that fine detail work there. Did that answer your question uh, Marina? Okay, so let's go back into our, our canvas there again. And let's get our reference photograph back into view as well. I'm going to just steal the canvas for a second just to put, put the hairdryer on it. Okie dokie. So now that I've got that initial guy down, we can go over back to the palette again. And let's go and mix the next darker color. 